I've had now quite a bit of time with the Z Fold 6 using it as my daily phone, testing it all out. It is slimmer, it is lighter, the design is more refined, it's got a better build quality to it, but has Samsung done enough here? Are they playing it just a little too safe? And is the Z Fold 6 here a phone that you should buy? I'll let you know in this review. And what do we get with our Z Fold 6? Well, simply the charging cable and a SIM tray tool. That's it. We get no case and no charger. Samsung has refined this model again. That is really the key word. It's all about just improving upon tweaking the existing design, which is a proven formula for this style of foldable. Of course, you have your book style that opens up like that, and then you have your flip vertical style, which is going to flip up, and this is the horizontal fold, which is the style that I do prefer. I think it's a better style. So capacitive always on fingerprint reader, and this does work well, but I need to press it in just first and then tap and it unlocks. No issues with that at all. It does work really well. And in a way I like it more than the optical screen fingerprint readers. I think where it is in this location is excellent, easy to get hold of that, easy to adjust the volume and unlocking it yeah very very good so the front screen if you missed my hands-on video it's only a one millimeter change here that's all they've managed to tweak out of the screen by just producing those bezels but the height of it there has been reduced so it's a shorter phone the weight has improved it's now 239 grams so that's down 14 grams and you got on the front here Gorilla Glass Victus 2 Gorilla Glass Victus two on the back. Now this is the pink color, although with my lighting it's probably hard to see. It has a very, very slight shade of pink to it. It's not a very strong pink color at all, so it's quite a light one, which is good. I do prefer this, and it's a frosted glass back. There is no Samsung branding on the back here. That is reserved for our spine of it, if you're looking at it like a book. So we call this a spine too with it, and the material's really good. So it doesn't, this color at least, and the white color too, would not show up fingerprints really at all on the sides, the frame, and the back of it. On the screens, you're still going to see that, of course. So more squared off now, keeping in line with the Samsung Galaxy S24 series down the bottom. Our Type-C port does support video out. It's USB 3.2, and we have the antenna lines there, two loudspeakers, and of course, their desktop mode is still present, which is one of the best. Software is the reason really to go for Samsung now and even less now for the hardware compared to the competition, but it is still excellent hardware, very good build quality to it. So this takes two nano SIMs, L SIM tray, of course, no micro SD card support. Up the top here, you can see, uh, I think three microphones. It's definitely not an IR transmitter we get with it. And then those cameras unchanged, uh, they are the same. What they've done is just tweak this ring around it to just size that out, make it a little bit bigger. So it's a slight change compared to the previous model. We have our flash here. So excellent build quality. The hinge, when you do open it up, this is the outer, of course, 6.3 inch screen. They're using both of them, their dynamic LTPO AMOLED screens, their 2X ones, they call them 120 Hertz refresh rate, variable refresh rate. You open it up and you're greeted with that inner screen, which looks very good. Now the hinge, great feeling to it. So when you open it and you close it, it does have a very nice feel to it. I like the resistance we get from it, the friction when you close that. It doesn't feel loose. It doesn't feel like it will loosen up. It won't spring itself open, so you can easily pop it up to use it like a tripod for the rear cameras if you want to do that. You've got that option. Using it in a flex mode, so you can type on the keyboard here. You still have all of that goodness that we had with the previous models, but they've just made it just so much better, and it has a really good, I think, look to it and feel. The camera here, the in screen one, all right, still there, still present. And yes, if you look close enough, you can see those larger pixels because the pixel density of this area where the four megapixel camera is, is a, a lot, uh, not as dense, should I say, as what we have with the main screen. So you do notice it a little bit. Now this is intended for use for really just videos. If you wanna take good looking photos, then you would stick to using the outer screen or you would use just the rear cameras, of course, for that. And you've got a raised lip too with this. It's a very small raised lip. So it's about uh, almost a millimeter. And when it's closed, there is a gap. So if you happen to get like a grain of salt in here or some sand, if you went to the beach, you close that screen, it shouldn't be touching. And that's the idea behind it. So it's not going to get all scratched up. Now they've increased the durability of everything Samsung. So this screen here, which is 7.6 inches, it 
is very fluid, of course, and 120 hertz. It looks really good. And as I said in my other videos, there's something about foldable phone screens because they don't have that normal protective glass over the top of them. They've got a very fine glass. The contrast and those levels of the blacks, the colors, excellent, really, really good. So this screen, Samsung's claim is that it will get itself up to 2600 nits. That's using HDR content, and which it does support too. So HDR10+, plus, that is what it supports. And you'll see that with things like, for example, Netflix is going to support that. Any other HDR content, it'll get that brightness right up for it. So the resolution of this screen, this is 1856 by 2160. That gives us a PPI of 374. So it's not the densest looking screen that you can find on a foldable, nor is it the largest. We've got other foldables that are just over eight inches now. However, you're not gonna see pixels at all with it. It's a very nice screen. So you do have your full screen gestures, of course. You can use the menu buttons. You've got shortcuts down the bottom here if you want those, but I can press here and hide them. Okay, that's a, an option with the software, which is One UI 6.1 based off Android 14. And you can continue with apps on the cover screen if you set that up. There's a lot of tweaks and things with the software that I can go over here. But to keep the video time down, I'm not going to go really in too much depth there because it's very similar. In fact, the same really with the Z Fold 5, a lot of these things. So about the screen here, what is the inner screen light when you use it in bright light? So out in direct sunlight here in Spain, very hot, bright day. The heat was affecting the screen brightness. Now, I did notice it dimmed down very quickly. It didn't take long to get a little warm. And you could still make out the screen as you can see now, but I do wish it was a little brighter. Uh, for a little longer too, because I'd only been using it for about 10 minutes. I shot some video and whatnot, and a few photos, and I just noticed that both of the screens started to get a little dull. You can see now the outer screen, that indirect sunlight, walking along here in one of the main roads in Paris, is working just fine with the maps. It didn't seem to dull as quick as the inner screen, the foldable screen does. The screen is 2.7 millimeters wider. And yes, it still has a crease. You can see it, you can feel it when I run my finger over it just a little. It's not that noticeable. It's only when I hold it at these certain angles because when you're using it like you would a fold like this, do you see it now? Not really. And after a while, you kind of just Ignore it, you don't really think about it, and it doesn't bother me anymore. There, I don't have the exact stylus for it because, because it doesn't come with it, and I didn't get that from Samsung. But I do have one ordered, and that may be featured later on in some of my other reviews. But I do have the Fold Edition S Pen, which is going to work just fine on it. So this is one of the reasons to go for, I believe, the key reason to go for the Z Fold 6 and any of the Z Folds is their optimization of the UI, the software, what we get with multitasking and the stylus. Even though it doesn't work on the outer screen, it works really well on this. And it works even over the crease. There's no problem with that at all. It won't make a funny line or stop working. Now the AI features Galaxy AI, they've added quite a few things. You've got that circle to search, what we saw before with the S24 series. Uh, you do have your typical stuff like right on the screen and smart select. And what I want is this, sketch to image. This is using AI to generate an image. So draw something. So what I will draw, and let's see if it is going to recognize this, uh, I will do a very quick sketch, very poorly done at that, of this is meant to be a cat. Uh, not a great picture. Okay, let's just draw some cat ears in here. And will it see this as being a cat? Well, that's supposed to be four legs. And it's do its tail. Okay, that's a shocking sketch, I know. Good thing I'm not uh, an artist, and this is not an artistic channel, otherwise that would be an embarrassment. So you can see it takes a little while to discover what it's gonna do. Oh, whoa, okay, that's actually pretty good. That looks so much better than what I just did. And it's given it a, a very artistic flair. So you can see the different versions of it. I quite like this one because the eyes uh, and the colors on it. So that's good. You can have a lot of fun with this. And what it is able to do, generating certain images, and there's, there's lots of things you can do with the AI. Another is what they've added to the gallery. I know a lot of people are talking about this, but, and there's other videos. So what I'll do is find, okay, let's see if I can remove something here with this image. So I'll click on that, which is our Galaxy AI, and tap or draw. I want to remove that, okay. 
I need to hold it down so I can move it if I wanted to, but I want to get rid of it completely. What about that? Can I get rid of this? Tap. Okay. Well, I can just move it if I wanted to, but I'll see. I want to get rid of those two things and maybe this thing in the background there too. All right, that. Now, it should, if this is going to work, I won't edit it out if it doesn't, because it's a good test. It should be able to remove those three objects I selected in my photo that I thought was shouldn't have been there, okay? Imagine this is a great portrait. Oh, okay, didn't quite get rid of them, did it? Especially this one. Maybe I needed to have tapped in and moved. All right, I can view the original. Okay, it's just kind of removed it a little. So it's slightly better, but I really wanted to get rid of it. So it's not 100% foolproof. It would probably work on some other photos a little bit better there. And one of the other ones that I do like, let's just discard that is one of the features is the video. So let's have a look at one of my video samples. Uh, where are we? Okay, so video where I was testing it out. There should be one here in Paris. Can I start panning around? You'll see that I can slow this down as I tap and hold. Here we go. So this is the video. I can turn this into slow-mo. So I can press right here. And see now as that lady's walking, see how that's now in slow motion. And I can save this. This is kind of a cool feature, I think, especially someone that does well, a lot of video work, that I can now save this as a slow-mo clip that was never a slow-mo clip. So it's the AI's added in all those extra frames. So you can slow that in without making it look all stuttery and dropping frames like crazy. One of my favorite things is the multitasking on foldable devices. This is why I'm so into foldables, because it's like you've got two screens with you. Depending on the orientation of the screen, it will be a screen that is either like a cell phone, a typical cell phone, say 21 by nine aspect, a little bit wider either side, or if I was to hold it up in portrait there, you'll see that we then do have the equivalent of like having two phone screens right here, which uh, I think is very handy. So here I have Google Play open. I've got my gallery so I can go through and look at all my different images, do all that on the fly. Perhaps I could be doing a bit of work, editing a document file and bring up one of the emails on the other side. It's all possible there. You can resize things. Now, I won't go into this in a lot of detail because it's something that's been there for a while. We know all really about this. So I'm gonna bring up Chrome if I wanted to. And you can also bring these up. You can hold down and you just, this is how you can easily drop them wherever you want, okay? I didn't have to have it set up at either side. I can have one at the bottom, one at the top, and this works better, I think, for websites when you go through scrolling and looking at different things. And then again, I can bring, bring up whatever I want here in the other screen, and you have your quick little toggles on the side to for anything I wanted to launch really quickly. So for multitasking, these are king. That's foldable devices, and the Z Fold 6 doesn't skimp on that. It is the same experience, which is the absolute best when it comes to multitasking. Performance in general has been just so smooth, so quick, no lag, gallery especially. It is quick, very fast. You don't see any caching of the images and it is fully featured. This has to be one of the best gallery apps that I have ever tested out in a phone. Now, bloatware, let's talk about some more serious things. So when you first power it on, do you have junky applications? Is it full of them? Well, there's only a few. I would classify uh, Facebook, possibly, and this is just to me personally, a lot of people say, no, I use Facebook, I love it, Spotify I also use, but what they have not done is just full this full of like 20 or 15 different applications that you're probably not going to use, which other brands out there not mentioning any names do do, and that's a lot of the Chinese brands, they love to do that, so bloatware is very minimal with Samsung, so that is good to see. Now battery life, no changes, unfortunately, because it's still the 4,400 milliamp hour battery, still 25 watt charging. This is some areas that I think Samsung really missed an opportunity. I mean, I feel like that it's one of those things that I was assuming coming into all of this to test it out early that it would have had a larger battery. So it'll run with this fixed test, mind you, at a fixed brightness, it loops until it gets to 20%, eight hours and 37 minutes. Is this a record? No. Is it better than the Z Fold 5? Barely. It's barely better than its predecessors. Very, very minor improvement. We're talking like you can perhaps play a video for maybe 30, 40 minutes longer. That's really it. So just be safe to say, if you're coming from a Z Fold 5, the battery life is going to be really identical for you, unfortunately. So charge time. This is where they're falling behind big time here. So one hour and 16 minutes is horrendously slow 
compared to the competition. There is competition out there that can fully charge their foldables in around 25 minutes. Uh, most of them are at least under around about 30 minutes. So that's well behind. Samsung really needs to up the game on this one. Storage speeds. Very quick, we are getting over 4,000 reads, writes almost 3,000 very good randoms. You're going to notice no slowdown at all. So it's UFS 4.0 spec, and I do have 512 gigabytes. As for Antutu, the score came out to be a little bit slower than I expected. Now, they have done quite a bit of work to the thermals on this Samsung, improving the Vapor chamber size is now 60% larger compared to the Z Fold 5. However, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is a bit of a hot chip in my experience. Now having covered, what have I covered now? I don't know, about over 10 phones. Uh, they all seem to get quite hot. Unless they're cooled by a fan, they're going to throttle. And that is what was happening. So it throttled down the performance, almost halved. And you'll see here on the little test, this is with wildlife, that it starts to throttle quite heavily about the two minute mark, which is very early. And this really continues on making no improvements and staying steady at least. At least it doesn't really go below that with the performance. So that means that when you push it really hard, we are talking about performance that is similar to the previous generation. So it's just the short bursts you're gonna see that. And I'll get onto gaming soon too with a demanding game Genshin Impact to talk a bit more about that. Thermals, well, I did again, it get on, it get up to 40 degrees Celsius, which bleh, is fine, okay? It gets warm to the touch. It's good, okay? I have seen a lot hotter than this from the competitors who push their thermals a lot higher, don't throw the chipset as much. So if you are worried about performance and you've got a previous Gen 1, especially from, say, the Z Fold 5, you're not really gaining much at all. I would perhaps wait for the Z Fold 7, to come out with a new chip to see a real jump in performance. But as it is, for everyone's needs, the performance we have in the 12 gigabytes of RAM across all models is sufficient. It's very fast, very quick. It's only when you game, and if you are into demanding games, games that are really console level, which this is because it's multi-platform, this is Genshin Impact. It looks stunning on the screen. Very, very good. And it does fit and adapt to the aspect ratio perfectly. There's no borders or anything like that. Now, the performance, very, very good. I've got it on the top level. And that means that it's the highest visuals with 60 frames per second. And it is working fine. It is good. You don't really see any slowdown until you get into certain areas. And after you game for a reasonable amount. So with 3D Mark stress test that I did run, it took two minutes to throttle. When you game, it'll take a little bit longer. And you notice the heat building up around here where it does get a little warm to the touch, but it is nothing alarming. It's not to the point where I feel like I need to break out a thermal probe. It's all acceptable temperatures and pretty standard for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. But boy, do these games look absolutely stunning on this screen. Now, I believe that the speaker hardware is exactly the same compared to the previous models, which isn't a good thing or a bad thing. These are good speakers. They're fine. They sound all right. Now, they are located here at the top if I am holding it uh, in landscape like such. And we've got the camera modules down here. So this is, if you're going to be gaming, the way to hold it, I think, like this. So you're not blocking the speakers, which are here and here up at the top. So what I'll do now is play this track. I'm gonna swing my mic around, aim it at it. So you can have a listen to what the speakers do sound like at 100% volume. They've got a bit of bass to them. The loudness is good. Really no complaints from me. They are good speakers. Okay, and looking at our cameras now with our Z Fold 6. This is our outer screen camera, 10 megapixels. We've got electronic image stabilization, 4K, 34K, 60 is what you can shoot with this. Next to, of course, you can see just there, the Eiffel Tower. I'm kind of <laughs> blocking it a little bit. This quality is fine. I think it's not bad at all, but it's exactly the same as what we have with the Z Fold 5. This is our ultra wide, which is 12 megapixels. We have electronic image stabilization. It is very steady, very smooth. Audio quality, excellent with Samsung's microphones. I've got a lot of traffic noise that you're probably hearing around me, so that's normal. But still, these mics are excellent. I think they're better than the iPhone's microphones. This is our one times. So the main camera, 50 megapixels with optical image stabilization. 
very steady good looking footage and our three times optical zoom camera and this has optical image stabilization with some electronic being applied now I'm gonna zoom in to this is now five times digital so you can get in pretty close there but the quality does start to degrade of course take this up to now the maximum which is 12 times digital zoom see a lot of cellular cell phone antennas on top of the Eiffel Tower which is pretty normal since it's so high this spot for them really and I'll bring that back to now the one times camera so video quality decent what about stills so the ultra wide I believe has changed the sensor it looks a little better and it can shoot 4k 60 Zoom camera three times, same as the Z Fold 5. Portraits are still looking good. It takes reasonably good photos. I think there's nothing wrong with them at all. They're perfectly fine. That's three times optical zoom. This is another one-time shot. This was on the plane flying back, and I think it handled that just fine. Portraits are looking good, good stitching. The weakness, like the Z Fold 5 and previous models, is indoors, indoor portraits. As I zoom in, you can see there's a lot of noise there's grain, so this is one area of weakness and I hope they can improve the cameras using better sensors later on in the next edition. So indoors here, a little bit of noise. Low light, fine for a foldable, but is it the best? No, this is not flagship level. Is it acceptable? I think so, but again, I feel that they should have done a little more. This final shot of the Arc de Triumph, that's a three times optical shot. And if the subject is well lit, it will still come out well. So acceptable cameras, but they could have done a little more. So the question that I popped at the start of the video was, should you buy the Z Fold 6? If you're new to foldables, but you're part of Samsung's ecosystem, you have say an A series or an older S series, Galaxy S series phone from them, definitely go for them. You're gonna be very familiar with their software, the UI, One UI, and it's well optimized performance is great. If you have a Z Fold 3 and below, it's a big upgrade for you. If you've got the four, not so much. And if you've got the Z Fold 5, uh, I don't think it's really enough to entice people over because really it's more or less the same phone, but refined, like I said, with the S24 series. Here we get, okay, the changes are welcomed. The slightly larger 2.7 inch inner screen, the one millimeter larger on the outside, you don't notice that, no added stylus support. And I really cannot, cannot believe that they didn't give this a larger battery. They would have had to have, change everything of course to make it a bit larger, a bit wider and faster charging times is the big one for me. I feel like Samsung's getting a little complacent, they're playing it a little too safe. Perhaps they have something in store for us. Perhaps there is going to be a larger model coming at the end of the year or the next Fold series. I really do hope so. And when you look at the competitors out there from China, they are doing it better hardware wise, better cameras, larger batteries, faster charging times, better larger inner screens, thinner, lighter, you name it, but they all fall down in one area so far, and that's software. That's the only real edge that Samsung now has with foldables, I feel, is their software is still the best, still the, the most polished, and offers the best kind of multitasking experience, options, features, and their desktop mode still fantastic and great to have. So those are my thoughts, my review here of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6. Thanks a lot for watching.